So in this property, we have extreme condensation as seen as dribble marks in this room and mould on the cold areas. Here in the corner where the mould is growing, it lines up perfectly with the cold in the thermal image. But what is surprising is that the area where the condensation dribble marks isn't as cold. I wonder whether this is a, a nighttime feature. This may be some metal which is warming up during the day but cold at night. Here in the lintel there is some metal probably deep down but not but mainly on the corner where there's plaster is beading. I'm opening the window up here on the window lock. Every room should have some ventilation. The traditional passive vents are fairly useless because you need to have external airflow and when there's no external airflow they create heat loss. This is less an issue around a window because it may form condensation and mould but it can be wiped away easily whereas that can't be done around an old passive vent. Modern day lintels are at risk of mould and condensation because there's reinforced metal in the concrete creating heat loss. Metal is a poor insulator. Any areas where there's metal support such as in lintels under ceilings will cause heat loss especially when it's cold at night. During the day it can warm up and sometimes it's hard to see the heat differential. The issue with heat loss is that it increases surface relative humidity because relative humidity is a function of both temperature and of vapour measured as dew point. Here we can see the areas of cold line up with the mould and condensation. There is extreme condensation and mould in the bathroom, lots of dribble marks. It's normal for a bathroom to be slightly damp, especially with modern hot showers. This bathroom, the ventilation system wasn't working properly. I increased the flow rate by about 50% and increased the overrun from about one minute to 30 minutes. If the door is kept closed and the vent left running, then you will find that the ventilation works much more effectively. You have backflow shutters, which seem to be opening okay, but if you look in behind that, you've got the, the original type of, the original type of um, vent that uh, unfortunately they restrict airflow, um, but Keep an eye on that. I tested the flow rate with a nanometer and found that I've got the 15 litres a second required under building regulation, so an increase of about 50% flow rate. The best way to tell if my methods are working is to use a damp meter such as a doctor meter, radio frequency meter in the same place and measure it weekly to see whether the dampness is dropping. So what I want to do is find somewhere to then just measure weekly and um, take a note. You'll find that the numbers go up and down, but the idea is that over time they will come down. So if you find the same spot, uh, probably here would be a good one. 78, 79. I'm an advocate measures, of using measure, targeted measure. ventilation. That means to ventilate all the areas that have condensation and high vapour levels. So bathroom, kitchen, drying clothes and respiration. Respiration, we should open the windows a little bit in the bedrooms. Drying clothes, you should use a dehumidifier. Ideally, you should dry outside, but clearly that's not always going to be possible. The dehumidifier should be at least 20 litres a day. That's based on humid environments such as Hong Kong, but in the UK, you can probably get about six litres out per day. Here, the capacity was only 12 litres a day, so it's just insufficient for four people. We also looked at the external render to see if there's any possibility of rainwater getting through, but there were no signs and there are no internal brown stains that accompany penetrating damp. Property has render cracks. Well, firstly, you'll see the crack on the outside, but the dampness on the inside will be brown because gotcha. of the staining as it ah, comes through. through. So, and you, you don't have that, and the pebble dash looks in really good order.